Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dino and today we will uh, actually spend some time talking. First question that I'm getting from my clients is what they have to do before they start doing um, piano lessons. So let's go from the beginning. Today I will tell you 10 steps or 10 tips before you start taking piano lessons. Step number one would be purchase an instrument. That's very important because as you already know, we spend half hour to one hour together practicing with that in person or online, it doesn't matter. But then you have seven days apart to do something to practice and to get ready for the next lesson next week. So this is if you're having less than once a week. It's very important that you purchase that instrument, but do not break your bank. <laughs> it's very important that you stay in that budget. I would say spend a couple of hundred dollars. Go to Amazon.com. It's not sponsored by Amazon, by the way. But go to Amazon, check what they have. I know that they have uh, instruments that are less than $500, which could work just perfect for you in beginning. Then if, if a kid or adult decides to uh, move on with lessons and, you know, it's always easy to sell that uh, instrument you have and to buy a new one, better one. But in beginning, make sure that you buy, if you're playing piano, that you're buying keyboard like I have right here with weighted keys, just like piano, piano keys. Um, Second tip that you need to know is place your instrument well. So what it means when we buy instrument, do not put it in areas where humidity. In North Carolina, we have a lot of moisture, especially in summer. If your instrument is sitting close to that window, you will have to maintain it even, even more than you should. Now, since I started talking about maintaining, your instrument should be your piano should be tuned at least once a year. So I would put that in my schedule and be like, okay, every year at this date, I must tune my piano. That's very important. Uh, now, you need to make your piano your part of everyday life. Now, what that means, you need to practice. If you spend just half hour a week practicing with your teacher and you're expecting that you will know, you will not. You need to finish that lesson, go home and practice. I keep saying that to all my students, you must spend at least 20 to 30 minutes a day. If you are just starting doing uh, piano lessons, if you're still in beginning, then I would say 10, 15 minutes would be just fine. But if you are already intermediate or advanced, if your day is really busy, you have to spend at least half hour. And then on weekends or days that you are off, that you have more time, you have to spend more time practicing your piano. Now, uh, this is very important for parents uh, whose kids are actually taking piano lessons. You have to talk about their music. So uh, I actually uh, made here notes for myself so I don't forget saying all this. So you have to listen what your kid is playing. Is he trying to play a tune that he knows? Is he making up his own? And then as you listen, take opportunities sometimes to talk about what your child is discovering. Uh, you have to talk about uh, music sound that he likes or what makes him feel while he's playing, how he feels. You have to encourage your kid. He, he needs to think or she needs to think about music that he, she is playing with developing a strong sensitivity to music. So why I'm saying this, and I would say that this is the most important part of your uh, learning. I have parents that I will not say that they don't care, but for them, music lessons are just like free time where they can just go and take a nap while kid is taking lesson. 
<laughs> now, I understand that, you know, life is hard. We are so busy with everything going on and we just need some time for ourselves. But when kid is practicing, be part of that. Be part of that. Be like, okay, let me see what you're playing. Can you play this for me? You can notice that your uh, teacher who you're paying is doing good job or going, doing bad job. If your kid is not able to read notes month or two months after you, he or she started taking lessons, then those lessons are not good. Kid needs to learn how to read notes first month, first month after taking, started taking lessons. In that first month, he or she needs to be able to read notes. I'm not saying that they need to play with both hands at the same time, but they need to be able to sit down, open the song and play right hand with reading notes and playing correctly. Same thing with left. I'm not saying that this will be easy. They might, ha they may have a paper in front of them with names and that's okay. That's fine. They will be using that paper for one, two, three, five months. And then after that, they'll be like, you know what, mommy? I don't need this anymore. I'm able to read music. That's my first goal when I start working with kids is let's learn how to read notes. It's very bad if you see your kid writing letters above notes and writing names. That's very bad. Unfortunately, some teachers are doing that because that's, you know, much easier for us. But I don't like that. I don't care if I need to spend three months working on these names. At some point, kid needs to be able to, um, to learn how to read your notes. Um, tip number five would be encourage ex exploration. So what it means, let your kid be around piano, let him or, or her play, let them play around uh, pedals. That way they will get more comfortable with the instrument. Let them, you know, press keys and be like, ooh, I, I know how to do this. So they will be so excited. And uh, we are calling that like, you know, composing songs. So those are all games that you can do uh, with your kids even before they start working uh, with, with some teacher. If they just put their hands on the piano and start playing or start pressing pedals, so that way they can introduce which pedal is holding longer and which one is not. So tip number six would be find a height adjusted bench. I have right here, it's adjustable. And, um, and that way, you know, kid will be, um, able to play uh, piano. So don't let them be too high or too low. Again, your teacher can help you, uh, can help you with this. And just remember that um, mostly benches are coming together with keyboard where you purchase that or even with uh, piano if you purchase at piano store. Now, uh, tip number eight, I think, it's distinguish between left and right. I know, kids don't have which hand is left, which hand is right. But there are so many tips that you can, you can teach them so that way they can recognize. My first step when I'm teaching them is put both hands in front of you and tell me which hand is giving you letter L. It's your left hand. Second thing, uh, tip uh, that I'm using when kid is still not sure which hand is left, which one is hard. I'm asking them, where's your heart? Some kids will be like right here <laughs> in the middle or the right side. But I always show them on me. It's right here on your left side. And I sit so they can see me. And every time when you ask them where your left hand is, they will remember by this letter L or by their heart. Uh, tip number nine is uh, you need to know your treble and bass clef. Um, kid needs to know what's your treble clef, what's bass clef. Again, if your teacher is, you know, really um, doing his job and really trying to teach that kid, then they will for sure write 
what treble clef is, what's bass clef. So treble clef is named as G key or G clef because it's starting on the second line and bass clef is called F clef because it's starting on the fourth line. So that's something that, you know, you can, you can just uh, say to your, to your kids. And finally, tip number 10, you need to find a great teacher. That's very important. So um, I'm always suggesting, even when I'm getting calls from potential clients, um, I'm not mad when they say, hey, we have you know, a few other teachers that we need to interview. That's fine. I would do the same thing. You need to find the best fit for your kid. Maybe I'm not the best fit for all kids, but I'm thankfully I have full studio, so you know I'm good. I'm doing my job good, so I'm okay with that. But um, some teachers may be like, um, "Why did you call me if you have a few more?" Don't worry about that. You are looking what's best for you and your kid. Even if you need to take some few uh, trial lessons, I would suggest you to do that. Invite you know few teachers that you already spoke on the phone. Always make sure to speak on the phone and always make sure that they have website or Facebook because in this time you don't know who is doing anything. So make sure to check everything before you invite someone to your house. When you invite a teacher to your house, sit with your kid. You don't have to sit on the same chair, but be in the same room and see how your kid is reacting. Notice that, your parent, you know, you know when your kid is feeling comfortable and when it's just, you know, like really nervous and, and anxious. I'm not saying that first lesson is always, you know, piece of cake. First lesson could be really stressed for teachers and for students because teachers are trying to uh, give the best impression and kid is trying to, you know, to be comfortable around the teacher, to, to kind of like the teacher because your your mom and dad said that you know someone is coming to teach you piano but you don't know how to act so it's very important that you are sitting in that room and always have few teachers and if they are doing their business well they will offer you that trial lesson and then after that you can decide what's the best step for you i will stop right here hopefully that this helped Anyways, I try to um, pay attention to, the, to these tips that I was telling you. These are just 10 tips that uh, from my experience are the most important. Um, there are a few other things that you need to think of like buying books and stuff like that, but your teacher will just walk you through that. Thank you so much for watching my video. To follow my channel, please make sure to comment, to subscribe, I would like to hear from you. To like this video, Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, follow me on TikTok, and then I will see you in the next video. Bye.